Welcome to The Chem Doctor, and this is the first video in the series on using the spectrophotometer in the laboratory and how that relates to a concept called Beer's Law, which I'm going to go ahead and put right here. Now, in this first video, what I want to do is lay the foundation for um, how we can use the spectrophotometer to determine the concentration uh, of some kind of molecule, element, or ion that's dissolved in a solution. The spectrophotometer is an instrument that utilizes the fact that light and light rays can activate or basically excite the electrons in a molecule. So the, the first thing that, that the student of chemistry needs to remember is that all light has energy. And I'll just write the equation here. Uh, and, you know, this came from uh, um, Einstein's work and so on, where the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. Now, the thing that, that uh, you need to remember when you look at this is that the top part of this fraction is literally uh, composed of constants. And for the purpose of this, a video and understanding how to utilize the spectrophotometer in a laboratory, we don't need to worry about the, t the top of this fraction because both Planck's constant and speed of light literally are just numbers that we would be plugging in here. The concept really that you need to consider is that uh, the wavelength of any given uh, particular light wave is proportional to the energy of that light. And the idea here is that light has energy, and that energy can be used to excite the electrons in a molecule, an element, or an ion uh, the following way, all right? And this is a really quick and dirty thing. It also relies on, on the understanding that you know something about electron configuration of the elements, and that you understand some generalities about basically the electronic relationship in molecules. So if we have some kind of suborbital that I'm just going to call E sub X and we have an electron and I'll just designate that electron using an arrow and somewhere close by is another suborbital that's very close in energy that we'll just call E naught for lack of anything else. All right. If, if we hit this particular element, ion, or molecule with a light ray that has uh, enough energy to promote this electron from its current station in this suborbital into this one, then the energy of that wavelength is absorbed by that element or ion or, or, or molecule. And the spectrophotometer is capable of measuring the absorbance of, of, of that, uh, or let me put it this way, the spectrophotometer is capable in being able to determine the, the absorbance of that wavelength. And the important thing to realize about this is that the absorption, all right, and I'll put this in words, the absorption of light under the right conditions is concentration dependent. And when I say concentration dependent, uh, what I mean by that, and I'm just, let's see, dependent, what I mean by that, when I use the word concentration here, is that uh, in terms of the molarity. And again, this is another concept that you, that you need to make sure in order to understand this series of videos that you might need to go back and review. So molarity refers to the moles of a substance that's divided or the moles of a substance that is dissolved per liter of solution. All right, and let me put a word on that. So liter of solution, all right? Not liters of solvent, on liters of solution. That means the combined uh, the combination of the solute of whatever is dissolved to make the solution in combination with the solvent. All right. Now, how does this work exactly? So, let's say that we have uh, hit the wrong one here. Let's say that we have a tube, and in that tube is a colored solution. So, a number one. 
this kind of t laboratory technique is go going to work uh, for any solution that has coloration in it, anything that you can see with the naked eye, and also solutions that don't have coloration, but that, that involves using a, a spectrophotometer that, that can measure uh, absorbances in the ultraviolet range. So that's actually something that I probably should add here. There, there are two kinds of spectrophotometers in the world. You have the, uh, the teaching instruments all right, uh, that measure only in the visible, and I'll abbreviate that as VIS. And then you have your research grade instruments. Uh, the research grade spectrophotometers that are going to measure in the ultraviolet and in the visible ranges. All right, now most of the time in a teaching laboratory, you guys are going to be dealing with these things that are called spec 20s, which is just a box that's not much bigger than a toaster oven. And that type of spectrophotometer is only going to be measuring absorbances, light that's absorbed by molecules, ions, or elements that are in the visible range, which is shown here. All right, so here's my visible spectrum. And then um, for, uh, for to, to be specific about it, your research grade instruments are going to be measuring in this range too, between the ultraviolet through the visible. So the UV vis involves, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a much more precise and specific type of uh, ultraviolet, or it's a, uh, of spectrophotometer that can be used for a wider range of molecules, ions, or um, elements. So the, the first key thing that, that the student, the most basic thing that the student of chemistry needs to understand is that given any solution that has coloration that you can see with the naked eye can be characterized this way. Now, the main purpose of this video is to describe how the spectrophotometer works. So again, it's a box that's generally not much bigger uh, than a toaster oven you can buy at Target or Walmart, for example. And if you were to open up the box and look inside, what you're going to find is that there's going to be a lamp. All right, And I'm just going to represent it as a very simple light bulb here. Obviously, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. And the sample that we're working with uh, will have uh, um, a slot in which this thing can be um, put into the machine or the instrument. We call this test tube, it has a special name, it's called a cuvette. In a teaching laboratory, the cuvette is probably going to be nothing more than a simple um, clean test tube that, that will uh, house the solution and that will be then slotted into the cuvette holder. All right, and the idea is the instrument is able to direct a beam of light, and that light will include all of the visible wavelengths. However, the spectrophotometer is able to um, discern or divide, and I'm not going to get into too much detail on this, but it can divide that visible light into individual wavelengths. The, the light is uh, directed at the sample. So the light is directed at the sample. Most modern spectrophotometers are computerized, so they know the 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 literally the amount of light, which I'm going to I'm going to define this way as I naught. So so the spectrophotometer knows the total amount of light that's directed at the sample. And again, remember this type of analysis is going to work for any sample that has coloration. The instrument can therefore measure how much light is directed into the sample, and the instrument is is able to uh, to know intimately how much light comes out of the sample. All right, and I'll designate that value this way, just simply as capital I. All right, so this is the light coming out of the sample. Now. The student needs to understand that the light coming out of the sample is less than the light that went in. Okay, this this has to be the case if we're actually if if some of that light is actually utilized to shift an electron from a lower energy level into um, a higher energy level. And remember that these two energy levels actually have to be for this for this technique to work. These two energy levels have to be. Um, pretty close in energy for, for this system to work. 
but because some of that light energy has been used to shift the electron into the higher energy level, the light coming out of the sample is going to be less than the light that went in because some of the light that went in was used to drive this process. All right. Now, we can call, we can take the ratio of this light and we're going to call this the transmittance. And it's equal to capital T and quite frankly equal to the ratio of the light out divided by the light that went in. It's a simple ratio. And, and if we extend this idea where we take this ratio and we multiply it by 100, then we get a new quantity that we call the percent transmittance. And I'm just going to abbreviate that. Percent transmittance. The idea here is, and I just want you to ponder this for a minute. You might want to even pause the video and just think about it. If, if the light going into the sample, some of that light is used to promote electrons, is therefore that energy is absorbed by the molecules, then the amount of light coming out will be less. So the, the idea of percent transmittance is that for any solution that's colored, that you can see the coloration with your naked eye, like copper sulfate for example, which I'm kind of using here, this would be um, a solution of CO, um, CuSO4, Typically, it's a, it's a blue, nice uh, sky blue um, solution. So any solution that you can see with the naked eye has a color associated with it is absorbing light. And there's less light coming out of the sample than the light going into the sample because, again, some of that light was used to um, promote electrons from a lower energy level into a higher one. So the question is, how can we use this information to find the concentration of a molecule in solution. All right, so I want to get to that. We can take this percent transmittance and we can change we can change it uh, into um, a, a new quantity that we call absorbance. All right, and um, I'm going to go ahead and move this here to a blank page so it's more clear. So we're going to define absorbance. as capital A, generally it's going to be at some kind of specific wavelength, so I'll make this X. And this is going to be wavelength, uh, and in science this is usually represented in nanometers. All right, And for the copper sulfate solution, it's going to be around 620 nanometers uh, is, is where we would set the instrument to, to make that, um, to determine that absorbance. And the absorbance is going to be equal to the following equation. And you'll see right away that where the percent transmittance comes in. So we're going to be taking the log of the percent of the transmittance. Now, this is just so you can see how the absorbance is related to the percent transmittance. So, um, just to take a second for this, as the absorbance of a sample goes up, if you think about this, this means that when you look at the solution, it's going to be darker. The percent transmittance, the amount of light coming out of the sample goes down. So these two, these two quantities have an inverse relationship. Also, they're unitless because Remember that your transmittance to start with is the uh, amount of light coming out of the sample divi divided by the amount of light going in. So this is a ratio, whatever units have canceled out. So the percent transmittance has no units and neither does the absorbance. Now here's the punchline. We have this thing called Beer's Law. And Beer realized that the absorbance, okay, the amount of light that is absorbed by a molecule, an element, or an ion is dependent on concentration of that 
substance. Uh, in molarity. And this is true as long as we're dealing with solutions that are relatively dilute. All right, now, what does Beer's Law say? It says that the absorbance of a molecule, and this is exactly the same term as we're talking about here, there's no difference, is equal to, the, uh, to a product of three factors. And these are represented uh, differently depending on, you know, where you look. It's not that complicated, though. All right? And I'm going to define A in my presentation here as what's called the path length. All right? And the path length is a pretty simple concept. If we go back to the cuvette, right, and that's the test tube that has the stuff in it, and we measure the distance from one side of the cuvette to the other. All right, this is what we call the path length because it is the distance that the light travels. All right, so this is the distance the light travels through the sample. All right, the next term I'm going to call the uh, extinction coefficient. All right, and this is uh, basically it's an experimentally determined uh, quantity. So the distance. Let, let me go back to the path length. This is usually um, this is usually one centimeter. All right, and then and the, the extinction coefficient is usually going to be in units of reciprocal centimeters and reciprocal molarity because remember the absorbance is going to be unitless and then the last thing is the C is equal to molarity concentration and this is the part that allows us to actually determine the concentration of the solute or whatever it is, the substance that we have dissolved into uh, the solvent to make the solution that we're characterizing on the spectrophotometer. All right. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and close my video. You can find more videos um, at www.chemdoctor.org. Please look for the next video coming on uh, the spectrophotometer and uh, utilization of Beer's Law to calculate the concentration of substances that are dissolved uh, in solutions. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close. Thanks for visiting and watching my video.